Hello and welcome to Fight News Now. I'm your host, John Pollock. Coming up, I'm going to be chatting with John Ramdean and Robin Black about all the action from Croatia over the weekend, including Junior Dos Santos and Ben Rothwell headlining the show in a heavyweight main event. Plus, we'll take a look at all of the other action that went down over the weekend and much more coming your way on today's edition of Fight News Now. I'm here with John Ramdean and Robin Black. We're going to talk about what went down in Croatia on Sunday. But first off, you guys were on the road this past weekend in Montreal. You guys were focused on the TriStar crew. Uh, tell us a bit about your trip. Well, uh, of course, uh, if you saw five rounds on Monday, uh, you got to see Sage Northcutt uh, making that 2,000-mile trek from Texas up to Montreal. He says he needs to get the sparring in. It's something that's very, very new to him. And he knows that if he wants to be able to compete at the highest level, he's in the UFC. He knows he's going to be facing tough and tougher opposition. So he's got to be ready. And that was a different philosophy yep. that you know his family had had prior to that about sparring. And I mean, it's it's kind of dependent on the gym of how they approach sparring. That's exactly right. Yeah, and uh, that's something we talked to Frost quite a bit about. You know, there are people right now. Robbie Lawler doesn't spar. But Robbie Lawler has had 10,000 yeah. rounds of sparring over the, the last number of years of his life, so that's okay. Then other guys, well, we spar three times a week. That's a lot of trauma for people to be taken. The uh, TriStar crew, Saturday, late afternoon, every single Saturday, you know you're going in for five five-minute rounds with a one-minute break, and then you start to get acclimatized to late on a Saturday, you're getting ready to fight. So that when it comes fight time, Saturday night is all right for fighting. All right, well, a guy that a lot of the focus was on this past weekend was Junior Dos Santos and going into this fight with Ben Rothwell certainly the microscope was on him I thought this was an outstanding performance by Junior Dos Santos I thought this was a game plan that was effective that he stayed disciplined throughout these five rounds he went in it wasn't as if he was throwing out every strike the guy's ever learned he, st he stuck to basics he was the faster fighter he mixed up body and head shots and this just wore down Ben Rothwell and I thought this was a really great performance by Junior Dos Santos and a win he very much needed. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, you know, you look at the last number of years and look at Junior Dos Santos, the beatings that he's taken against Cain Velasquez and that fight with Alistair Overeem. I know there's a lot of people writing this guy off. I think people really forgot how good Junior Dos Santos is. You know, a lot of the time he just reduces the menu, as you mentioned. He just throws a lot of punches, mixed martial arts boxing, sometimes sprinkles in some kicks just for good measure to always keep and his, his opponent guessing. That's looks not very, something very, exactly. that he, he, to me, has always utilized in fights. And I think if he had a do-over with Alistair Overeem, I mean, this was a guy that was just anytime he's not coming in there to land three or four strikes, it's one or two, and then boom, he was out of there and making Rothwell constantly chase after yep. him and get tired. That's the game now. That's the area that some people find they can be substantially better than some of their opponents out there. You look and you say, how did Holly Holm beat Ronda Rousey? How can I do that as a heavyweight fighter? I make space, I use strikes to try to make distance, just like that, clear your way out, strike, come in, and move your feet again. That's what he did for 25 beautiful minutes. Look, all the way out. See how far out he is? Far out, far out, far out, you're far away. The whole game, the outside fighting game, whether you're Dominic Cruz, whether you're TJ Dillashaw, whether you're Stephen Thompson, whether you're Conor McGregor, whether you are Holly Holm, and it's the way that she almost beat Misha to retain her title. The exact same game converted to heavyweight. Also really adding the body shots. 92 yeah. significant strikes to the body. What, what's it, what is outrageous about this? We read some stuff online where people were like, oh, you know, Ben Rothwell should hang it up. You know, he looked, sly, <laughs> he looked tired, he looked slow. Nonsense. Junior DeSantos <sighs> destroyed this guy's body. The so only I don't reason, go on the internet. Uh, exactly, the only, <laughs> it's just crazy. The only reason he was slow is because his opponent the former heavyweight champion of the world had his game plan executed perfectly and it slowed down Ben Rothwell. Ben Rothwell looked very, very good in this fight. You saw that he had a game plan. Unfortunately, Junior DeSantos' game plan was the one that worked. Everything does not result in some kind of enormous reaction. And that's the way our society has kind of trained us. Everything needs a headline. Everything needs to have an enormous headline with deep meaning. When you are on a four-fight winning streak and we're all saying you should be fighting for the title and then the next night someone has a perfect game plan, you don't need to retire. The whole world says, oh my God. I saw writing where somebody wrote online, one 
a, a blogger, and he said, yeah, I couldn't believe how good Dos Santos is. That makes me uh, question, maybe I was a little hasty with this. You click through, it was his tweet after he lost to Overeem saying that Dos Santos should retire. Everybody isn't either amazing or terrible. Everything is gray. Uh, there are so many grays. Everything is not black and white. The fight game is very complicated. Some nights it works and some nights it doesn't. Junior Dos Santos made this one about skill. He's the more skilled fighter, but fights aren't only about skill, but this fight he made it about skill. Yeah, and I think it lends itself more to the heavyweight division than any other. It's the, at the top, you have parity in the sense, and I think good parity in the sense that you can put any of these guys together. Here's Junior Dos Santos, who we mentioned last week. Now he's got a win over Ben Rothwell, Fabricio Verdum, and Stipe Miocic. Yeah. And you look at how Ben Rothwell and Junior Dos Santos individually performed against Alistair Overeem. That's the heavyweight division in a nutshell yeah. for mm -hmm. you. And I think Junior Dos Santos, this was a win where he fought smart for 25 minutes. And I was very much entertained by this fight. And now suddenly he is right back into this mix. And who knows what is next for him. But he is certainly, it's, it's so interesting, this heavyweight division. Because everyone can claim a win over the other guy of where they're, they're moving forward. And now Junior Dos Santos certainly re-energizes re his career to yeah, get heavyweight. Yeah, certainly. And JDS understands the landscape. That's why he's saying... You know what? I'm going to remain in tip-top shape just in case Stipe or the champion Fabrizio Verdum can't fulfill their obligations. So I think there's a lot of people that really get what's going on. Junior DeSantos has been at that top of the mountain before. He's looking good right now. And as you pointed out, kind of reinserting himself into the mix. And you, we, I think we wouldn't be surprised if he was to challenge for the title again. Before we just rolled this B-roll, I was literally going to say the best 25 minutes from a pure skill perspective were these two guys. Stipe versus Dos Santos, the top level of modern stand-up striking in the heavyweight division. Yes, Cain Velasquez hits like crazy and combines that with his wrestling. Yes, Verdum's Muay Thai has advanced uh, uh, a lot. But Junior Dos Santos and Stipe Miocic, with their movement, with their feet and their heads, are on another level right now. That was the best 25 minutes of heavyweight fighting, and maybe we'll be able to see that again. Stipe might win this belt. He has the tools to beat Verdum and win this belt. If he does, sign me up for JDS versus Stipe, too. Derek Lewis, another heavyweight that took a step forward in that division on the weekend, stopping Gabriel Gonzaga. Certainly, I think everyone anticipated if this guy could land, his power is incredible at, at heavyweight. I really felt that Gabriel Gonzaga, I thought he'd be able to take him to the ground, and he did, even mounting the back of Derek Lewis. But to his credit, Derek Lewis got back to his feet, and this guy is much more than just some power striker that everyone kind of labels him as. I mean, this is a guy that can certainly survive on the ground, did so against Gabriel Gonzaga, and Derek Lewis, I mean, this was a big jump up in terms of guys that he has fought in the heavyweight division, and I think he's someone now that... Uh, people are curious as to where this guy can go in the heavyweight class. This was a good good win for him. Yeah, I agree 100%. And Rob and I were having this conversation about, you know, Junior DeSantos and Ben Rothwell, the more skilled individual, won that night. I don't think that's the case when it comes to Derek Lewis and Gabriel Gonzaga because just as you pointed out that if Derek Lewis lands his hands on Gabriel Gonzaga, he is going down to the ground. That is a fact. Just like it's a fact that if Gabriel Gonzaga got this fight down to the ground, he is infinitely better than Derek Lewis in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu department. In side control, he's better. Well, he had side control. What happened? Derek Lewis was able to, while well, Gabriel Gonzaga went to the mount, he was able to get him out of mount. Gabriel Gonzaga took his back. There should be no reason why Derek Lewis can defend against that because of Gabriel Gonzaga's abilities in the jiu-jitsu department. He did, he rushed things, and then Derek Lewis took control. There was a small window of opportunity. He took advantage, he landed his punches, and the fight was over. Yeah, amazing. He just survived on the ground. It's not just survived, put it back where he wanted, against the second best grappler in the heavyweight division. You know, only Verdum is arguably the yep, better sure. jiu-jitsu player than Gabriel Gonzaga, and we mapped it out. Because we, uh, on Saturday or Sunday for our preview show, if he lands his big punches, he wins. But if Gonzaga is going to win this fight, he'll get it to the fence, get the body lock, get it down, and work on the ground. He did all that and still couldn't win. That is the difference. You, you, like you said, it's, it's, uh, the skill guy will often win. Skill can beat all. But you can make a fight about something other than skill. And uh, there's all different types of skills. So you put it to where you are the more skilled fighter, that's the game. You know, every heavyweight essentially has a fight book now, aside from the winners we saw this past weekend. But a guy who just is sitting there, literally was sitting there on Sunday, was Josh Barnett, who does not have a dance partner. Could you see either of these guys possibly matching up with Josh Barnett sometime this summer? Because everyone's going to be looking for fights at this point, and the majority of the heavyweight division in that top ten is booked. Yeah, I, what I... 
of course, we're all looking for the championship fight. So that's the goal is to see who the two best guys are and eventually the number one guy is. But I think a lot of mixed martial arts fans, combat sports fans in general, they just want to see great matchups and, and fresh matchups. And I think right now it's probably the best time in heavyweight history for top guys, legitimate top 10 challengers, as well as fresh matchups. You know, Ben Rothwell just lost. He, he can, he, there's a matchup with uh, Travis Brown, rematch with Roy Nelson. There are so many fights for all these guys at the heavyweight division. I think they just have to be interesting. Stylistically, I think the UFC has to look at these, and I know Joe Silva does, and it just comes down to giving the fans what they want to see. How about uh, fans want to see Derek Lewis versus Roy Nelson? Exactly, no, and he no, called out Roy Nelson, that? so that, yeah, that, 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 that makes it writes sense. itself. Yeah, lots of different ways you can go in the heavyweight division. I think it's a pretty fun time for this division, and of course, our next championship championship fight will be Fabricio Verdum and Stipe Miocic, which if that fight stays together, is a real fun one. I think Stipe Miocic is someone that a lot of people are sleeping on in terms of this guy's ability uh, to win a championship. Yeah, true, but at the same time, they also saw him lose to Junior DeSanto. So I think there's a couple close of... Close fight, A very, though. very close fight. I agree. But it's like, okay, well, I'm not really sure who this guy is. Okay, we know that Junior is the, the former champion. He lost to Kane. How's he going to look? Yes, this guy is competitive. He's able to land on the former heavyweight champion. They just need to see some serious action stoppage. I mean, they saw that with Andre Arlovsky. So I, I think more people are going to jump on the wagon, especially if he can look good against Fabrizio Verdun. Movement and footwork is winning fights right now. And we just saw it at heavyweight just on the weekend. Junior Dos Santos used footwork and movement to win at heavyweight. That's Stipe's game. He's maybe the best in uh, the division at it. Certainly, he and JDS are. He was the guy doing it even more so for longer. Junior Dos Santos just really clicked in. Hey, if I stay out here, you can't touch me, and I control the angle when we come in. I'm going to get to you. You're not going to get to me. It was a perfect performance. All right. And as well, Timothy Johnson also there in the mix, also victorious on Sunday in Croatia. The UFC now looks ahead to Tampa, Florida, which is where they will be on Saturday night for another Fox card. And we will have a preview show for you coming up Thursday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time, previewing all of the big fights in Tampa, including your light heavyweight main event involving former champion Rashad Evans and Glover Teixeira.